Hey yo, Andy here, and I have been so busy recently, you guys know I've been putting out a lot of plugins and things like that to help you guys, and today is no different. My big kind of plugin part of stream up that I've been working on and kind of teasing all over socials is now here. Uh, it is for, for supporters though, so you even need to be supporting me monthly at andylippy.co.uk or stream up. Um, on their memberships, think Kofi or Patreon, whatever. Um, but I'm going to tell you about the the new updates first, and then I'll show you the new part of the plugin. So this update part is literally just an update to the StreamUp plugin, uh, version 2.1.3, and there's uh, quite a few changes here. So we've got adjustable scene organizer high, a transition copy and paste, uh, which is awesome, a don't remind me option for your plugins, and then early access showcase for the new early access stuff, and we've got the um, a, a scene organizer expand and collapse button that collapses all of the folders at once. So that's just been from your guys' feedback. So keep feeding back what changes you want on here and, and things like that. So don't remind me about these updates. It's super helpful. So you just press this and then, because obviously these are failing to load um, because obviously they're not compatible with OBS 32, uh, which is not a problem. But I can just press don't remind me about these updates and it won't remind me unless there's like another update. So say if we want to stay on version 2 of a plugin, but then version 2.1 comes out and you're like, I don't want that one though. You can just tell it not to remind you. And then basically it won't remind you until it moves up another version number to like 2.2, for instance. Uh, so as soon as you press that, that's it. It saves it. Easy as that. Um, and the scenes organizer, what we were showing is we've now got a button just here. So if we've got like a bunch of folders in here, so I'll just do a folder there and I'll put something in it. And then I'll put two things in it and I'll just create another folder as well. Um, da, 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 like so. We've got a button now to expand and collapse all of them at once if you want to. Um, so a couple of these things as well, just to let you know, because this is my stream up OBS theme. Uh, not all plugins work with it at the moment, just because it's a lot of work that goes into it. But I am slowly getting there. I've got an update for the theme coming out very soon as well, which you get for being a member of either me or stream up as well. So you get lots of stuff for, for supporting the cause. Uh, so the other part of the update, which is something that uh, was requested, is we can now change the line height in the scene organizer just down here, which is really cool. So you can make it massive, make it small. It's up to you what you want to do with it. Um, and I thought that was a pretty handy little thing in there. We also have the, uh, I'm just trying to remember the patch notes now. Uh, obviously, don't remind me is awesome. Transition, copy, and paste. So I did a video, I think it was yesterday, talking about all the, the secret tools that's in the StreamUp plugin. And I gave like a preset uh, streamer bot um, pack that you could just import and you've got all the shortcuts and everything on there for you to use. It's basically all the like web socket -y stuff that you can do, which is kind of hidden, but not. Uh, but rather than right clicking on a source um, and then going up to show and hide transition, you can now set hotkeys and stuff like that to show and hide transition. It's really cool. Uh, or you can set it up uh, as, like I say, web socket or even up in these uh, toolbars. Actually, I don't think I've added it to this, but I've just now thought maybe that's something I should do. Uh, so I might add it as a button up there for you guys as well. And then obviously we had a couple of bug fixes and stuff like that with um, the different menus not kind of working correctly and stuff like that. Um, but that's all sorted now. So let's get onto the meat and potatoes. So the thing that I am so proud of, and it's been such a long time creating is this. So as you can see, it looks a little bit wonky at the moment just because it's not compatible with my theme fully. So I'm just going to change the theme uh, to Yummy just because that's like a whole nother ball game uh, to, to do. And I've uh, not really had the time at the moment to do it. So this is Source Explorer. Source Explorer is literally your one-stop shop for l anything in OBS. So something that always grinds my gears about OBS is basically having to open a source. Um, say we want to change the settings of this video capture device. We want to open it, and then we've got to change the settings of it, and then we close it. Oh, we want to change the transform. We right-click, we go to transform, edit transform, or use the keyboard shortcut. That's another window. Oh, we want to change the filters of it. Okay, you used to have to just do right-click and filters, but obviously they added this, so you press that. So we can only kind of utilize one thing at once. 
as you can see, you can only open one filter. So that's another thing that annoys me. But we, we can open multiple uh, with this tool, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, and yeah, there's all lots of different menus that you can go into, and it's quite annoying. So I built a doc that does it. It's called Source Explorer. Uh, you can see the basic information of each source, and obviously, because it is a dock, you can undock it, put it anywhere on your screen, dock it in OBS if you want to, uh, make it as big or as small as you want. Obviously, there there are limitations to the size because I've used the same menu systems as that you're used to, so you become accustomed to it. So if I go to transform, it looks exactly like the transform window. So I wanted you to feel at home whilst using the things there's a little bit of spacing issue but it's fine i can i can work this out like i say it's a work in progress uh, and this is for for supporters so we can rename our source here you can basically do everything to your source in these windows change the index so you can see that's how it moves it up and down in the list we can do the show and hide transitions here as well including all the settings so again to get into them menus it's normally right click and then do them here same for the blending modes you can do all that here your blending method, your scale filtering, your deinterlacing, all that jazz, all your transforms, flip it horizontally, dead quick, vertically, rotate it, 90 degrees, all the buttons are at your fingertips. We've got the properties there. Obviously, there's no um, source found here for the minute because it's, uh, it's not set up for, in fact, no, not the phone. There we go. It just took a little while for it to to respond because basically properties can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, but the way that it's working, it, it, it sorts itself out. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not worried. Are you worried? But like I say, it is still like beta. Um, so don't, I, I wouldn't kind of um, utilize, you start using it a lot whilst being live. But whilst you're in your design phase and stuff like that in OBS, this is the the, the thing to be using. Um, same for the, the audio tracks. You can change all the audio things in here, monitoring. Everything's just there rather than obviously having to go right click or go into advanced audio properties and see all the stuff here. You can just do it here. Um, we've got miscellaneous, which is just a bunch of different things that uh, kind of the techie kind of side. So you don't always need to do it. And then a nice little helpful thing here that just tells you what your source is on, um, like group, scenes and groups that are containing this source. And it'll tell you. And then if you click them, it will take you to that location. So if you want to, if you're like, oh, wh where is this source being used? I don't understand it. You can just click it and it'll take you there. It's really cool. Uh, and then filters, which is, ugh, filters is just so good. So you saw that I added some effect filters earlier. So we've got audio and video because this one's like a video capture device. All the filters are here. I can open these filters. I can look at these filters, do whatever I want with these filters. And I can open multiple at once, which is just insane. We couldn't do this. That looks a little bit messy though, right? That does look a little bit messy. I'm intrigued why move value is is taking a little second to load the properties. Really, really strange. Taking a second for them to, to load in, but everything else is fine. So as you can see, we can have these all in different windows and operate them all at the same time. So I can adjust the gamma. Or maybe I want to start messing about with some glows and stuff. I can do that if I want to. Uh, say an inner glow and we we'll start just tinkering with stuff. I uh, just want to change the contrast a little bit. So it's just going to give you so much power at your fingertips. And obviously we can uh, turn them on and off from in here as well. And you can also just press close all windows and it'll close them all down. Uh, there's still a ton of features in this Source Explorer that I'm wanting to add and stuff like that. If we right click, um, this is for you techie people out there. This isn't 100% working yet because I've not tested every single command. I'm one guy. I can't test every single command um, quickly. So we can copy WebSocket commands for streamer bar or just the, the normal WebSocket for this setting. And what that will do is if I copy the, say, CPH of that, and I'll just show you this. Obviously, this is for you, you techies out there. Um, and I'll just open this up. Uh, let me fire in this, paste that in there. That's all the settings to do a CPH send OBS raw for that color correction filter. So no longer do you have to like manually uh, type in all the different settings, know what order the settings need to be in. This will generate, you just make the effects you want. You just copy the filters. I know, easy clap. 
this is huge. It is absolutely huge. It's gonna. The reason why I've not been releasing like stream up products at the minute is because I wanted to get this off the ground because this is gonna save me so much time that I can just focus on making cool things. Uh, we've also got other access to the um, show and hide at the bottom. We've got lock. Uh, you've got your audio monitor. Uh, no audio output like mute it. Uh, screenshot the source so you can just press that button and it'll screenshot that source you've got your monitoring uh, off on uh, monitoring output uh, this one is video capture device enable disable and we also have all the transform icons here as well so if you hover over everything it'll all be um kind of uh, what a tool tip that's the one tool tip uh, so you can do all your rotates just there as well. What we can also do as well is we can press this little button down here. This is like a spotlight, but it's basically select a source. So it'll bring up all your sources. You can filter them by it, what filters are on it, or you can filter it by a search. Um, and then you can find exactly what it is that you're looking for. So that's just found all the groups, for instance. If I say show sources, you can see all the sources there, or you can even start just typing in and you can f search that way, press OK, and now we're actually controlling a source that we're not even on this scene. So if we find out what scene that's on, and we can actually do that by pressing this button, so it's on something called Scene 2. So if I add a nested scene now, and add Scene 2 to this, as you can see, you just kind of like... Let's just make sure it's turned on. That'll be useful. There we go, it's turned on. <laughs> so now we've got this nested scene... And we want to, say, edit this source. Normally, you'd have to go to that scene, find it, or use studio mode, go into it, and then find it. But what we can do is select it on here if we wanted to. So we've already got it selected. We've got, um, in fact, we've got the scene selected. Let's go back in here. We'll type in gradient, press OK. So now we're using this gradient source. So that means I could just open this window adjust this inside of here so we kind of don't have to go to that scene to edit it so if you're trying to like create nested scenes and you're trying to get them pixel perfect and it requires you to kind of be in the scene whilst moving it around on the other scene which i've had a few times you just do it here you can add your filters to it if you want to so if a right click press add filter all your filters come up there's so many filters here at the minute uh, and what I'll probably do, I don't know, add a user-defined shader. Add it there. I can edit it here if I want to, or I can put it in its own pop-out window because I might want to add some more later. So I just press browse, and we'll do something like, uh, we'll, we'll do, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, let's add a rotato. <laughs> no, a rounded rectangle, because obviously rounded rectangles are cool. Um, press reload. So that's another little bug at the minute. If if a uh, a filter basically refreshes the menu, I need to tell my plugin to refresh it. That's fine. You can just literally fix it by closing it, opening it again, and it's there. Refreshes. Uh, I mind just adding like a, a refresh button uh, automatically. But there we go. So now we're controlling filter of a source that we're not on, or we've not even been to the scene for it, or anything like that and it's just it's just really cool and it's going to save you guys so much time uh, and effort doing stuff because when you're getting really technical with things honestly it's so good but this is why it's kind of just for um supporters at the minute just because it's such a big plugin like i just doing the demonstration of this i've come up with a couple of bugs and stuff like that uh, but it is stable i've been using it on my live version it's just like there might be some little hiccups every now and then of maybe uh, a menu doesn't refresh but please if you guys are using it send me that feedback and i can get it fixed uh, there's only so much testing you can do on your own right and there's only so much plugin building you can do on your own but i really hope you guys support me um uh, with this journey of making all these things for you guys because it is pretty t tough at the moment um uh i'm not gonna lie but this is like my uh, kind of last hurrah <laughs> so yeah join memberships and get your hands on this it doesn't matter what tier you join at uh, all the links are down below and there's a lot of goodies that you get and let's face it this is op i'm i'm pretty proud of it all right much love to you all stay safe don't do anything i won't do put your rock over the stone